Today we are chatting all about Instagram stories, how to build Instagram story confidence so that you can show up more consistently and build your brand. my channel. I'm Jenny Paul. I'm a business coach for entrepreneurs looking to build meaningful, profitable businesses doing what they love. So on this channel, we chat all about business strategy, mindset, and self-care. So if you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can catch my videos every single week. Now, Instagram stories are the perfect place to practice getting more confident on camera because your stories only last 24 hours, but you have the option when you like your stories, when you think you've done a good job, you can always save that to your highlights so it's there forever. Or if you felt like, you know, that isn't something that you wanna save, they're gone in 24 hours. Now I have seven tips for you to help you build your confidence on Instagram stories. So let's jump right into it. Number one is to plan before you hit record. Now I know that you've probably felt this way before where you've opened up the camera, you've opened up Instagram stories and you're just sitting there trying to think of what to say. You feel like you wanna show up but you don't know what to say so you end up just closing the app and not posting anything at all. So my tip is just to plan a little bit before you record. It doesn't have to be elaborate at all. In fact, I have an Instagram prompt that is super easy that will help you show up and it really is just telling people where you are, what you're doing and how you're feeling that day and it just helps you to show up and start building rapport with the people that are watching. Now if you want to get a little bit more elaborate in your planning, I also have a free Instagram story cheat sheet in the description box below that gives you some Instagram story prompts that you can use to show up. So you can talk about things like the behind the scenes of your business or you can talk about your story a little bit or you can talk about one of your team members or your employees or just something about your brand that you think that people might want to connect with so if you want prompts like that that are brand building Instagram stories that are very easy for you to create make sure you um, sign up for that Instagram story cheat sheet because that'll be super helpful but overall this tip is to just Put a little planning into it. Tip number two is to take those nervous signals from your body as excitement instead of feeling like it's making you anxious and too anxious to show up. Just like anything else in life, the things that happen to us we are the ones that ascribe meaning to those things. So the nerves that build up, we can either assign a meaning that set a meaning to it that says that we're too nervous, that we're too anxious, that this isn't for us, or we can choose to assign a different meaning, saying that this is excitement, this is performance adrenaline, this is gonna help me really show up, and this shows that I really care about what I'm saying and I'm ready to go. Tip number three is to do a really quick breathing exercise before you actually hit record. I'll link a video right up here that shows you the exact exercise that I do to fill myself up before I record myself doing anything. So whether it's going on Instagram live, filming an Instagram story, maybe I'm doing an IGTV, maybe I'm doing a YouTube video. This is an exercise that I do every single time before I hit record to make sure that I'm filling myself up before I give myself to the camera and share my energy with the camera. This ensures that I'm not burning myself out, that I can show up consistently day after day because I'm really taking care of myself. Jay Shetty just released this book called Think Like a Monk and I just started it and one thing that he says really hit me, I actually read it this morning, and he says that self-care is for service. And it's so true, you have to take care of yourself before you can show up to serve anybody else. And it is really important before you hit record, before you go on Instagram stories or anything else, to fill yourself up to make sure that you're able to show up as your best self. Tip number four is do not be ashamed to use Instagram story filters. There are tons of filters with new ones being created every day by users and you're sure to find somebody that creates filters that you like or maybe you can just use the Instagram story filters that actually come through the Instagram story app. So the one that I use is called Subtle and it is the one that Instagram has included. I find that especially on days where I feel a little bit more like, you know, maybe I, I don't want to do my makeup, which is almost every day, um, or I just feel a little bit more drab, I'll just turn on that filter and it really makes it seem like I have the best lighting ever and it helps me to show up and I really don't think that you should feel ashamed for wanting to use filters. I know that sometimes people say, you know, I refuse to use a filter, I just want to show up as, as me and that's beautiful, that's amazing. Not all of us are at that point where we feel 
totally confident or totally energetic um, without having some sort of filter there. So if that is the case and you feel like, you know what, I just feel a little bit more confident when I have a filter on, it's similar to makeup. Sometimes we feel more confident when we have makeup on. Or Shailene Johnson, for example, she mentions that she puts on fake eyelashes every day and she does it for herself. She's doing it because it makes her feel a little bit more ready. It gives her a little bit more energy and she feels like she's just ready to show up. So regardless, however you feel about filters or makeup or using fake lashes, just do what feels best for you and what makes you feel confident enough to show up regularly. Now tip number five is also on the topic of looks and that is when you start your Instagram story, do not apologize for how you look. I know that, I mean, I've definitely watched multiple stories where I've gone on and somebody has said, oh, um, I'm really sorry about my hair today, or I'm sorry about my makeup today, or I'm sorry I look really tired, or I'm sorry I'm sweaty, I just worked out, you know, something like that. And I mean, sometimes it just comes out naturally, but if you can help it, do not apologize for how you look. You are beautiful. You're showing up to share a message that your audience needs to hear from you on your stories. Don't apologize for how you look. Show up and, and own how you look. I mean, whether it is that you do feel tired that day, own it. And I mean, maybe your story is just gonna be a little bit more lower energy that day. That is totally fine. As long as you know that you can show up as yourself, however that is. And I find that in terms of creating consistent Instagram stories, that is the key for me has been just to show up how I am. Sometimes, you know, I've had a really bad day and I'm even crying and journaling. That happened the other day. And I kind of just went with it and posted how I was feeling throughout the day, um, throughout my journaling session. And, and I really feel like it helped me connect to the people that were on the other side of my stories watching because I'm just showing up real. I'm showing up as who I am. Just had to wait. There was a super loud bike that passed by. Um, it's actually still out there. I can hear it idling. So I'll just wait. All right. So getting back to not apologizing for how you look, we have to remember that when people are on Instagram, they are scrolling a mile a minute. Either they're scrolling their feed this way or they're scrolling through stories this way. And we really want to stop their scroll. Now, what is going to stop their scroll more? Is it going to be, oh, I'm so sorry for how my hair looks today? Or is it hey, I have three tips for you today on how to increase your productivity, or I have four behind the scenes looks of products for you that are coming out soon that I really wanna show you. Which one do you think is actually gonna stop people in their tracks? We have to remember, the bike is back. This is what happens when you're filming in Bali. There's motorbikes rolling by every second. But anyways, going back to it, you really want to make sure that you're capturing their attention with some sort of headline, with something that pulls them in. It doesn't always have to be something like that. It could even be, look at how beautiful it is outside today. Just something to capture their attention rather than focusing on what you look like. On that same topic, you also don't want to start with, I just wanted to hop on here quickly and say that that is a very common opener. And when we think about it, that can take like three to four seconds to say sometimes. And one Instagram story is 15 seconds long. So you're using roughly like, let's say 20 to 30% of your Instagram story, just setting it up instead of jumping into the message. So the key is to really open strong and give people a reason to stop scrolling and to listen to what you have to say. And remember that Instagram stories are short. So we want to be as impactful as we can in a short period of time and all in all you just want to get right to it if you do find yourself focusing a little bit too much on how you look or feeling like you're you're just not feeling that confident that day something that you can do is really try to focus on your message what is it that you're trying to share how are you helping somebody who is your ideal client or customer that's on the other side of your stories and why do they need you connect to the why of your business why your business exists and how you actually serve people so that you can focus on the importance of your message instead of focusing on how you look or maybe focusing on the nerves that you have or feeling like you're not that confident that day. Really focus on the message and that will carry you through. Tip number six has to do with intonation, which is the tonality of what you're saying and sort of the melody of what you're saying. You want to end on a down note whenever you're talking about something and ending your sentence. Instead of say ending your sentence here, you wanna end your sentence here. And it really helps to convey confidence and 
it will also help you as you're trying to build your confidence you will see that just that slight little change will make you feel more confident as well the feeling of authority that you have when you end your sentence on a down note and a more confident lower note versus ending it up here as if you're asking a question like you're not really that sure of yourself it does make a difference so I mean I would just pay attention to when you end on a high note versus when you end on a down note rewatch your stories try and improve based on what you already see yourself doing and if there's some a uh, little bit of improvement that you can make when it comes to your intonation, it'll really make a big difference. Now my seventh tip is one that has helped me a lot and it's a little bit, I mean, harder to do in that it's gonna take a little bit longer and it takes a little bit more work, but it definitely pays off and that is to open up your throat chakra especially if you have any blockages with respect to communication, like maybe you feel like as a child you weren't really heard, or maybe you had somebody say something about the way you speak or make fun of you. When we focus on that center, we can work on releasing those things that are holding us back on an energetic level. So we have different energetic um, chakras in our body, which there are seven different ones, and your throat chakra is one of them. It's an energetic center that really helps us to communicate, it helps us to speak our truth, it helps us to, um, to speak more confidently. And so this is a really great chakra to work on clearing. If any of these energetic centers are closed within our body, we can feel effects either physically or we can feel them energetically and they can come across in different ways and the ways that we actually show up in the world. With our throat chakra, if it's closed, we're gonna feel like it's not as easy for us to communicate. We're not gonna feel that confident. So some ways to open up your throat chakra is to first know that your throat chakra is around your throat area and that it's the color blue. Each different chakra in your body has a different color associated with it. So the blue throat chakra, if you focus on that and focus on opening that up, you can do that through meditation. So in your meditation, you can just close your eyes and focus on a blue light there. And just what I like to imagine is as if the blue light is dull and through my meditation, I'm just making it shine that much brighter through placing my attention and my awareness on it. And that really helps me feel like, okay, I've I've opened up that energetic center and I am feeling more open in my communication. Of course, it happens over time and this isn't just a quick fix by any means. It is constant focus on the chakra of your body that you want to improve and open up and doing meditations and other things to help open it up. Some other ways to help open, up, open it up, there are certain crystals you can find that are associated with the throat chakra. A lot of them are blue, so you can think of like the aquamarine or turquoise, um, sodalite. There are a bunch of different blue uh, crystals that you can use to help open up your throat chakra. So you can even lay there in your meditation and place those that crystal over your throat chakra. And again, just meditate on opening that throat chakra up and, and clearing that energetic center. Overall, I mean, there are a bunch of tips for opening up different chakras in your body and how they can actually help us in different ways in our business. I'm definitely going to be doing a more detailed video on this. So if it's ready, then I'll link it up here. If not, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are Notified, notified whenever I post a new video. Those are my seven tips for helping you show up more confidently in your Instagram stories so that you can show up consistently, you can build a connection with your ideal clients or your customers on Instagram stories, and you can build your brand. I hope you found that helpful. Leave a comment down below if you are using Instagram stories and what your experience has been with them, I would love to know. Also, if you found this helpful in any way, please hit the like button because that really helps out my channel and I will see you in the next video.